Hello everyone, my name is Michael. In today's video, I'll go through how you can find documents, update them and remove them, and how you can use filters and a lot more to do so. So with that said, let's get into the video. So first of all, in the previous video, we have already created a document as you see so. So we have few fields. We have used the full name, the email, the phone number, favorite movies and date of registration. So let's see how we can fetch a certain user by their email. So let's go back on our Visual Studio code and let's remove that as we will not be using that. And what we can do is user. Actually, we can do the do this either asynchronously or we can do this normally. So let me show you both of the ways. So asynchronously, what will, will you do is const user equal user dot find one then we pass an object which is basically the filter so what we can do instead is we can also say const filter equal the object and pass the filter right here or you can do it immediately it doesn't really matter and we can pass the filters here so your filter can be the email and we can give it the string and let's go back and copy the email there we go so Every field of your database can be a filter and there is more filters that you can use, but let's go here first. So yeah, as you see, all we have to do is user.find1 and also a thing we have to do dot execute, which is basically which basically execute this command, which is the find one. And make sure you have to use the model that you use for your collection so here we are using user because our collection is the users okay so let's test it now let's do console.log user and let's do node index.js first it will connect to the database which takes about 10 seconds okay so it says promise pending and that's because we need to add more time for our database to connect. So let's put the timeout to 15 seconds. Okay, so what I forgot to do is await. So as we said, this is asynchronously, this is running asynchronously. So what we have to do is wait for it to complete. That's what basically await does. So let's run it again. And there we go. We fetched the document successfully. So by using the email and passing the field that is equal to the email, we get that field. Now, as you saw here, we did it asynchronously as we said. So let's try and do it normally by passing a callback. So what we can do instead is use the same command, but instead of awaiting, we can pass a callback to the execute. So let's do that. So this is the callback. And this callback takes two parameters. We have an error and then we have the document, which we can give it whatever name we want. I'll name it user. And what we can do is if there is an error, we console.log the error. Otherwise, console.log the user. And it will do the same thing as we did before, just not asynchronously. And we use asynchronously when, whenever we want some steps to run in a certain order. So first we want to wait for a certain document to be fetched. Then we want to do the other one. And it's not nice if we put commands underneath another command into the callback. It's kind of messed and that's why you should use asynchronously. But whenever you only have to do one thing, and that's just to fetch the user, then to do it this way is just fine. So that's how you can fetch documents, but actually that's how you can fetch one document. Now to fetch multiple documents, instead of find one, we do find. So it finds as many as it can. So we do dot find. Though this has some limitations, so it cannot fetch more than X amount of documents and it's probably 50,000 plus. That's because it cannot fetch so much into the memory. Your application will probably crash, but it, there is other ways you can do that. And it is called aggregation. And I'll go through that into another episode. Now let's run this command again. And we only have a one document. So have that in mind. It will only return one document but instead it will do that into an array. And also have in mind, it will be the same if you have multiple documents, which, which documents match this filter will be returned right here. But instead of getting one document, which is basically an object, you get an array of documents. As you see right here, we have an array and we have each document. 
and that's how you can find documents. Now there's other things you can also do and right here next to find what we can do is sort the documents so what we could do is dot sort and basically usually you sort them by the date so what we could do is get from the earliest user to the newest user or the opposite so how you can do that is give it the field it would it should sort with and our field is date of registration and then we can do minus one or one and let me explain what that is so whenever we do minus one it goes in order of descending so it sorts them and it gives us descending if we do one it gives us ascending okay so you get that you get the point and we also have the skip so what we can do is skip and this takes a number so we can Put 10 for example and what it will do actually you should sort first and then skip so it will grab all the documents after the x amount of documents so x amount of documents is inside the skip and if we put 10 it will skip the first 10 documents after sorting them and it will give you all the other documents in our case we only have one so it will basically give us non-documents. Yeah, there's a lot more filters you can use. So I'll have them down in the description. So yeah, that's how you basically use the find function. Now let's go ahead and see how we can update our document. So now we, we will do user dot find one and update. Again, we will set the filter, but now we can pass another option and here we will pass what it will update. And first of all, we have to use dollar set to do that. And then again, give it an object, which will pass the value and the updated value for each value. So after it finds the document, we will tell it to update, for example, let's do the phone number. So phone number, we want to you update it with another phone number and we will do the opposite so we'll do zero and etc etc and we have to it has to be a number and that's basically it now that also takes a callback so let's give it a callback and we can take an error and we can take the user and we can also pass some other options and there is a really useful option called new and if we set that to true it basically gives us the updated user so if that's to false and by default it is to false what it will give us is the old document and not the updated document so it will not give us the updated phone number but it will give us the document with the phone number not yet updated so if we pass it true we get the updated user so let's do if error console.log error again the same thing and then we console.log the user and if we go back to the database and confirm the document is updated let's refresh and there we go the phone number is successfully updated now what if we want to update multiple documents it's basically the same thing so here instead of using the find one and update function we will use the update many and now before we test that i would like to create two more documents so we can test that with and there we go and now if we go back to the database we can check that the users are created and now what we can do is create a filter that can find which documents have the same email again that's not what will you do in a real application but i'm giving you examples so now let's create the function which will update multiple documents and how you can do that is like that so user dot update many we put the filter here then we put a comma then this is what it will update and here we have the options and then we have the callback and we will name that users because we get multiple users so for filter what we can do is email and that to be equal with our email so john at gmail.com then we can pass which fields should be updated so it's dollar set then equal to an object and here we should update i guess we can do let's update favorite movies so i can show you an example with an array so let's do favorite movies and that can be an array and that should be an object 
with a title in a year. Let's add one more. By the way, Copilot is just auto-completing those fields as you can see. It's not me putting those movies. So then we can pass an option, which is the new to true. So it can give us the update documents. And then we get to check if there is an error and then console to log the users. And there we go. So let's test it out. Let's clear our terminal and then let's run the app. Let's go back to the database and see if they are updated. So let's refresh. And if we go to the favorite movies, there we go. And the favorite movies are updated. And I think if we constantly log the users, we are not getting the users, but we're just getting the results. And I think that's basically it. So let's rename that to results. Okay, so whenever you constantly log the results, you should get the results and not the users. So I have that in mind. Okay, so that's how you basically update documents and you can update any field and you can also add new fields you don't have already. So how we can do that? Let me show you. And what I'm talking about is not adding fields you don't have defined here, but what we can what you can do is actually add fields and if you even if you don't have them already in your documents, you can still add them. So let's do that. So let's add, for example, let's do, let's do color. I know this is kind of random, but I cannot think of anything else. So let's do color. Actually, let's do favorite color. Okay, there we go. Now this field wasn't added before, so I have that in mind. And now let's go back. And here on the set, what we can do is add the favorite color and let's do blue. So let's run the app. Now let's go back on our database and check if the favorite color is added. And it actually is, okay, I thought we have to pass an option, but that's not the case. So there we go, you can pass now values that wasn't there before. And yeah, next, let's go ahead and see how we can remove documents by passing certain fields, certain filters. So let's go here, and now we will do user dot, we can either do delete many, or we can do find one and delete. So let's test both of them. So let's pass a filter and basically only get the error thing. And then inferror, console log the error, and then console log deleted. And here on the filters, let's add email and then let's delete the email that is equal to this symbol right here, mike at gmail.com. Now have in mind, whenever you do find one and you have your filter matching more than one, and then let's do that. So as you will see, it will not delete both of the john at gmail.com documents that, that is matching these fields, but only one of them. So let's test it out. So let's do node index, because what we are doing is find one. So it will find either the most recent one or the oldest one. I'm not sure about that. And then it will delete that, not all of the fields that is most that is matching john at gmail.com for the email filter. So if we go back, let's refresh. And as you will see, we have two of them. And let's see which one. Okay, so it deleted the oldest one. So that's how it thinks. If you use find one, then it will find the oldest one and then delete that based on the filter. But if we do delete many, and all we have to do is replace the function, then let's pick another value to delete from because it's basically the same for both of them. So let's do, okay, so let me show you another filter you can use. Let's use the favorite movies. And what we can do is we can say, if favorite movies contain the title, this one title, then delete that user. So let's go here. So we say favorite movies, which is basically the array, the name of the value for the array. And then we do, we use a filter called lm match, which, which basically says match an element. And then from that array, we want to match the element of the title. And we want the title to be equal. Let's say the Godfather, there we go. So what that will do is go to favorite movies array and try to match an element called title and then the title should be equal to the godfather so if a user has the godfather it will delete it and that will delete multiple but we only have one but it works the same as if you have multiple or just one so let's do that and it says deleted so let's go back to the database and let's refresh and let's see if the user is deleted and there we go the user is deleted and we have the user that, that, that didn't match that filter. 
So yeah, that's how you can delete documents based on certain field on certain filters. So yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed it and what you'd like to see next on this series or any other video that you'd like to see. And also, if you got any value from this video, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future episodes on this tutorial series.